1961, January of 1961, the SL-1 reactor in Idaho was being restarted. It had been shut down for about two weeks for the Christmas holidays and for some scheduled maintenance. So shortly after the new year, workers at the plant were readying the plant to be restarted the next day. At about 9 p.m. on January 3rd, 1961, all the remote sensors at a control station in Idaho away from the reactor sounded. The fire trucks and the responders went to the site and what they found was the reactor had blown up. They initially found two of the workers near the reactor top, near where the explosion occurred. One of them was dead and the other one was in a very bad way. It took him some while to get him out because the radiation was so high, but he died on his way to the hospital. It took him a while to find the other third worker at the site. Then somebody looked up at the ceiling and found him impaled by a control rod that had been ejected during the explosion from the reactor core. It had penetrated his body and stuck him like a butterfly, pinned him to the roof of the, of the structure, and he was obviously dead. It's known what happened at SL-1, the reactor exploded. It's not known why it happened because every single worker at the site died. That plant had had problems with sticking control rods because there was material inside the reactor that was breaking loose and gumming up the works. So workers had got into the habit of exercising the control rods, which was, which was to manually lift them up, move them down, lift them up, move them down to try to work out some of this gunk. But he actually moved it far enough for the reactor to go critical. That much energy produced in a short period of time vaporized the water, created a steam explosion. The steam expansion blew the lid right off the reactor vessel. One of the workers is buried in Arlington Cemetery. Uh, we, we often hear that no one's ever, nuclear power has never killed anyone. Um, I've taken people to the graveside in Arlington where this one worker is buried, full honors. It takes permission from the Nuclear Regulatory Commission to exhume that body or that grave. He's buried under three feet of concrete because his body is so radioactive that it would harm anybody else to come in close proximity to it. So the argument that nuclear power has never harmed anybody is belied by a simple trip to Arlington Cemetery to look at that grave site. Um, you can't make that trip and come away not believing that nuclear power is something that you can't turn your back on for a second because it doesn't take a second for it to kill you.